A few weeks ago I was looking at the work of a street photographer I really like called Timu. He takes these stunning shots of nightlife in South Korea and I realised that a lot of the techniques that I've developed for my animations can be used to make a shot like this fairly simply, like the one you saw at the start of this video. So that's what we're going to be covering today, all the tips and tricks that I know to make a scene like this as fast as possible. This video has been sponsored by NVIDIA. If you're a returning viewer to this channel, you'll know that Decoded has been sponsored by NVIDIA for a long time now. NVIDIA recently released their 4000 series RTX GPUs, and I've just upgraded to a 4090 graphics card. That replaces the two 3090s that I've used in my system previously, and unbelievably this single card is faster in Blender than both the 3090s were combined, while running quieter and cooler overall. The 4090 performance is up to 70% faster than a single 3090 in Blender, which is a huge leap in performance. And look at the size of this thing. I mean, I expected it to be big, but this is kind of nuts. Anyway, there's going to be a link in the description where you can find out more about NVIDIA's Studio Program, which is an initiative by NVIDIA to give creatives the tools that they need to make the work they want to work. That's in terms of hardware, like this 4090 GPU, and software solutions like Optics and Nano VDB, which help you to work faster inside tools like Blender. But let's just jump into Blender and start getting this scene built. So I started out with a reference picture of a Korean street during the day, and I took it into a free program called FSpy to match the perspective of the camera. Now I've talked about the basics of FSpy many times before, so I'm gonna save you the details, but I knew that I wouldn't get a great match for this anyway. These old streets and old buildings never perfectly line up with each other or any sort of perspective, so it's a waste of time trying. I figured as long as the perspective of the building on the left was roughly correct, I could kind of figure out the placement of everything else based on that manually later. Then it was just a case of using the FSpy add-on for Blender to bring the camera and all the perspective and everything into the scene and start blocking out all the major shapes of the buildings. Now I use this add-on that comes with Blender called Archimesh to do basic things like windows and doors. I really love this add-on for quickly adding architectural elements that I don't really want to make from scratch. Nobody likes to spend a lot of time modeling like a door or something that won't even be a focal point in the image and you can always modify the Archimesh output to make it more like what you want. As I mentioned earlier, the buildings on these old streets never perfectly align with each other. I've lined up a cube with the front of the building on the left, but when I move across to the right of the screen, we can see that the perspective now no longer aligns on the y-axis. To figure out the rotation of this building, I'm going to use a little workaround. I've placed the corner of the front face in line with the corner of the building. Now this is a known point in 3D space. All I need to figure out is the rotation of the building. So I'm going to set the origin of this cube to be on that point. And then if we rotate the cube on the z-axis, everything should align nicely. Now if we go through and we start adding all the extra details to the rest of this building, we can see that everything's lining up perfectly or pretty much perfectly with the original image, so we know we've got the perspective roughly right. So once I had these buildings in place, I added a plane for the road. I subdivided it a few times and then I went in with the sculpt tools and just added some bumps and irregularities to the surface. With the possible exception of the Netherlands, you're never going to find a back alley anywhere in the world which is perfectly straight and flat. That's just not how back alleys work and it's kind of not how roads work in general. Nothing screams CGI street more than a perfectly flat road with buildings all at exact 90 degree angles. It's just not a thing. So now I've got pretty much all the major elements of the scene in place, I moved on to the materials. I used just this basic wood texture set for pretty much everything that's made of wood in the scene. All I did is I just shifted the colour slightly with a hue saturation node so the repetition isn't quite as obvious. Then I added a tile material to these lower walls around the building and on the upper walls on the building I added a brick material. All of these texture sets are from textures.com by the way. Now quite often if it's just a brick wall I'll leave it flat but in this case I knew that it would have to be bumpy. You see we can make these street scenes and make them look good quite quickly because we don't have to worry about materials because everything's wet. We don't have to worry about the fine details and the textures because everything's dark but we do have to worry about the shapes and the silhouettes. The reason is because everything's wet and we have these strong neon lights. It lights up the edges of all the different shapes and if we have a load of flat surfaces that's going to stand out like a sore thumb and it's going to be a boring image. 
so I wanted the brick to have some actual bump to it. So to do this what I did is I used micro displacement with a displacement texture that came with the original brick texture. Micro displacement is a type of mesh displacement that happens inside the shader at render time. The mesh itself doesn't actually alter shape until you hit render or you preview the render in cycles viewport mode. Micro displacement works best with adaptive subdivision which increases the amount of subdivision on the mesh the closer it gets to the camera. That means that you don't have loads of extra subdivision on areas where it won't make a difference because they're far from the camera. To enable all this stuff, just change Blender's feature set to experimental, add a subdivision surface modifier and make sure you click adaptive, which is a new setting that will appear once you're in experimental mode. Then in the material settings for the brick or whatever you're trying to set up, go down to the settings and change the displacement type from bump to either displacement or displacement and bump. Finally, make sure you go into the shader settings and you add a displacement texture going into a displacement node, then you plug that into the output. You can use the displacement node to change the strength of the bump. So using this method, we get really good viewport performance. We get lots of details where we can actually see them close to the camera. And if you have a fast graphics card like this RTX 4090, you're also going to get really good render times too. To quickly preview how this is all going to look, I set up a large cube, I give it a volume scatter material so it would add some light fog into the scene, and then I put a strong light in the distance where I knew there was probably going to be some sort of lamp or a neon sign in the future. You can see how the displacement on the bricks is doing a really great job of catching all that light, and it makes the scene look much more realistic than if we just use a flat texture. Now for the same reason, I added a really low strength Musgrave texture to a bump node inside the glass shader. You can see that just makes it look like it's a little bit warbled and less flat and perfect, because if you look at panels of glass, they rarely all line up exactly the same. A lot of the textures I used for this shot were lifted straight from the reference photo. This illuminated sign, for example, I matched the perspective of the box the best that I could, and then I just UV projected from the camera's point of view, the UVs, so that they would line up perfectly with the original reference image. I used that reference image as the texture, and I could just use that basically to power the strength of the emission light. So now the white parts would be more lit up and the black parts would have no light at all. Now, signs like this in real life would never have perfectly black parts, right? Because it's just ink, printed onto translucent plastic, you're always gonna have a little bit of light that bleeds through. So we just wanna add a little bit to this so it's not quite perfectly black. And to do that, I just used a math node, said to add, and I used a really low strength number, which will make the black slightly less black. To get an idea of how the street was gonna look in the final image, I used a bump node with a noise texture on the road, and I decreased the roughness so that the surface would look wet. Now I've got the optics viewport denoiser enabled here and it's doing a really great job of quickly cleaning up what should be a very noisy shot. Typically when you have volumetrics in a scene you always have a lot of noise. And when you have surfaces like this road where it has lots of very small details and it has low roughness that usually causes a lot of noise and fireflies. So it's nice that we're getting a really clear image here very quickly using the optics denoiser. I thought that this road surface was looking a little bit too new and clean and uniform, so I decided to swap it out with this texture set I found of a really messed up cracked road. Just like we did with the bricks earlier on, this is all about thinking about the shape and the silhouette of the scene and trying to get as much visual interest into the shot as possible. I knew that all the cracks in this road, once the surface was wet, would look really good with the lighting and it would light up and it would all look very organic and very real. CG roads too often look just way too perfect, even if they don't fall into the trap of being flat. If you look at an actual road surface, especially in like a back alley, you have potholes, you have surfaces that have been repaired, usually have areas that are cracked and messed up. There's all sorts of stuff going on and it's worth finding a decent texture set like this or combining multiple texture sets to get a better appearance to the road. There's some corrugated plating on the side of this building in the original reference photo. I decided to replicate that for the exact same reason. I knew that it would catch the light and it would add some more visual interest into this dark area up the top. Corrugated plates and stuff are actually really easy to do in Blender. You just add a plane and you give it a few loop cuts. Then you select every other one of those. The easiest way to do that is with checker deselect. 
And then you move the selection up or down so that you have this repeating W shape. Then you just need to select all of those edges and use the bevel tool to round it off. Shade smooth and it looks like a piece of corrugated plate, especially once you add some sort of metallic texture to it. This second illuminated sign I made the exact same way as the first one. I just tried to match the perspective as best I could and I projected the UVs from the camera's view. You can see here that the scene is rendering out at about 13 seconds per frame at this point, which is actually really, really good for a shot with so much volumetric fog and all these strong lights. This is due to something called Nano VDB, which is an NVIDIA technology that can be actually used on newer RTX cards to get much faster volumetric rendering. It's automatically supported in Blender. You don't have to enable it in the settings or anything. If you have a newer RTX card and you're using optics, it'll just work automatically. Static scenes like this always work a little bit better if there's some sort of human interest element, like an actual person in the scene or a character or an animal. So I found this cute animation of a cat on Sketchfab and I just altered the animation slightly in the graph editor so that it was licking at its paws. I figured it would be like drying itself off after hiding from the rain. Speaking of rain, I tried a few different experiments with various new ways to try and make it look like it was raining. I tried using this Geonode setup. I also tried um, making some water splashes, which I was gonna render out separately and have them appear on the floor with like a particle system. Everything I tried just kind of looked a little bit naff, so I left it out. My philosophy is always that it's best to just leave an element out of the scene if you know that it just doesn't look quite right. Even if you've spent a lot of time on it so far, if it doesn't work, just leave it out, unless you think you can fix it pretty quickly. I've wasted absolutely countless hours in the past trying to fix an idea that was just never gonna work in the first place. I quickly added an interior to the shop just by finding a picture of a Korean store on the internet and placing it inside the shop on a plane with an emissive texture. Now this wouldn't have worked if the camera was going to move around much in the scene, but because the camera's perspective hardly changes, you're not actually going to notice that this is just like a picture inside the windows, especially considering that the windows are going to be a bit fogged up and wet. Now I did feel at this point that the shop could use something in the mid-ground to kind of help sell the effect and I also thought that the shot in general needed another human element. So I went on to Adobe's free Mixamo website and I found a character and an animation of someone just using a mobile phone. I put them behind the door so that it would look like they're taking a call inside the shop. These Asian street scenes and back alleys always have tons of cables hanging down in between the buildings. To recreate that, I used this really cool Geonode setup called GeoCables by Anam Deep. It's completely free, I'll leave a link to it in the description, but I would recommend you drop them a few dollars if you think it's worth it, because it's a very cool tool. It gives you loads of really nice controls over like how many cables you're going to generate and how much they sag. Then it's pretty much just a case of clicking between the points where you want the cables to go. The final solution that I used for the rain was actually fairly simple. I have an image sequence that I made for a previous project of raindrops hitting off some glass and rolling down the surface. I used this as the bump channel of the window material just to add some raindrops. Now it didn't really look great in this case, but it's a small enough detail that most people won't notice anyway. I'll link that in the description if I remember to. And in front of the camera, I have another video on a plane with some raindrops just falling down. I have a transparent and a translucent material mixed together and I use this video as the factor between them. The white rain particles on the video now appear as translucent raindrops when they hit the light and the black background just becomes invisible. So finally, for a little touch of extra realism, I just added a noise texture to control the volume density of the volumetric fog. That adds a little bit of irregularity to the mist, which is rarely uniform in density in real life. You get these sort of pockets of denser and pockets of thinner areas of fog. So the main takeaway I think from this video is to worry more about the shape and the composition of the scene than the details like you normally would. The darkness and the wet materials are gonna do all the hard work for you there. You really don't worry, have to worry too much about taking shortcuts, you just have to worry about the overall look of the scene. In my next video, I'm going to show you how I made this short Godzilla movie in under a week, so stay tuned for that because it's going to be a good one. Thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link in the description to read more about NVIDIA's 4000 series RTX GPUs 
and the NVIDIA Studio program which empowers creatives to work faster with tools like Optics and Nano VDB. Thanks for watching and have a good day.